welcome to HB Ministries. I'm so glad that you joined in today. Today's topic is your failure is not final. Will you say that with me right now? Would you just say my failure is not final? My failure is not final. In Hebrews 12:1, it states, strip off every sin and every unnecessary weight that easily entangles us and trips us up in our race. But let us run with endurance and constant and consistent persistence to the finish line, the race that is set before us. Let us just keep running with endurance. And that is running in such a way. God has called us all to run in such a way. And today we're going to look at Moses. Moses is someone that really could have focused on his past and really came to the conclusion in his race and stepped out of the race and said, because of my fail failure, everything is finalized. But I'm here to tell you that your failure does not finalize the finish line. You're in a race and God is calling you to keep moving, to keep running with endurance, and to keep running with persistence. So if you do have the run um, workbook, which is right here, if you have the run workbook, I'm going to ask you to open to pages 64 through 67 with me today. If you do not have the run workbook, that is fine. Just listen. Grab a piece of paper and a pen, index cards, whatever you want to jot some sentences down with, because I believe when you're listening to a faith-based message and you hear something that stirs your soul, that if you write it down, it'll just stick. And I know that it's something God wants you to, to really hear. So maybe just get in the habit of writing down what you're hearing. If you have the workbook, there are a few lessons tucked in that will take you one step further than my message today. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on that page, but we're really going to look at Moses. We're going to look at Moses, and Moses was an, an amazing leader. And just because of his failure in the past, God did not finalize him and push him out of the race and said, I'm not calling you to lead. There comes a time when God continues to work with us. No matter what our failure was, he continues to shape and mold us because he wants to transform us from glory to glory. He wants us to be made in his image. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, And we are all with unveiled faces. We all contemplate the Lord's glory. But we're constantly being transformed into his very image from one degree, one degree of glory to another. And this comes from the Spirit of the Lord. So God's concern is with you. He's with your future. He's with you finishing the race. He is not stuck up and entangled and ensnared in your failure and in your past sin. If you look in the um, run work workbook in several areas, you'll find my, my testimony. And I have several failures, several moments where I feel that I wasn't even valued. I had so much shame um, that made me so fatigued that I stepped out of my own race until strong mentors and other coaches came in my life and pushed me and taught me to run with perseverance with the race for the race that is set before me. And in that race set before me, God did not see my sin. He wanted to work with that. And he wanted to transform me and shape me and mold me into his image. So I needed to get my eyes on the prize, the finish line set straight before me. And I needed to learn how to run in his presence. And so today we're going to zoom in on how do we understand God's glory around us? How do we ask him for his glory? How do we ask him for his presence? Because that presence is going to motivate us to run. So really, we need to get to the place where we'll see in a minute that Moses said, Lord, just show me your glory. Because he was getting tripped up on his past. He was getting tripped up on his failures. And I so identify with Moses. Moses, there were so many people that were like, ah, oh, look at you, Moses. You did a huge criminal act. And for those of you that don't know, if you look back on Moses' past, he murdered an Egyptian. He was a murderer. Hmm. If we stop right there, you would think, well, how you don't deserve to be in this race. You murdered someone. You don't deserve to run. You, this isn't for you. This race set before you, that's not for you, Moses, because you murdered someone. Really, God was saying, no, I have a plan for you, Moses. I want to call you out and I want to continue to shape you. I'm still calling you to lead my people. I still have a plan. But Moses, we've got to get some things in order. 
I want to take you from one degree of glory to another. But he needed to learn how to handle his control issues, his anger issues. And I love it because if you really get in, we're not going to really go to that. We're not going to really focus on his criminal act. I just want you to know that he did have a failure. One of his failures was a criminal act, and it was due to his um, having to control things outside of God's will. He needed to get his hands in there and take care of it himself. How many can admit in a situation they want to get in and just take care of themselves? I know in one of my situations, a very, very tough testimony of mine. Something had happened. I had made a wrong choice, and I wanted to get in and just handle it myself and end it. And again, grab my um, workbook and that testimony will take you real deep. But I failed. And if I wanted to really sit back and focus only on my sin, it would have tripped me up so bad. And the enemy is so clever on constantly reminding me of all the unnecessary emotions and all the unnecessary past choices that I made that he was constantly going to entangle me and trip me up so I would not run and focus on the race that was set before me. So if he could, if the enemy could get in there anyway with all his negative chatter and keep me focused on my failure, it would have messed me up in my whole race. I would have been still sitting on the sides. But until somebody came and taught me how to put one step in front of the other, just lifted me and taught me to stand in God's word and then helped me walk a little and then I began to run. And that's where God wants you to go. So if you're sitting and you're outside of the race right now because that failure has kept you down, I'm hoping that today's message just helps you stand in his presence. Once you stand in his presence, you're going to see that Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Moses was like, okay, I get this. Lord, show me your presence. And then he began to walk a little and then run. But the enemy knows how to trip you up again. And Moses is so awesome. He reminds me of so much of myself because... He battled with this. He battled a lot with his flesh. And so he constantly needed to get to a place where he was positioning himself to hear from God. And that seems like so, a lot of what people would say, I know I have friends and stuff that would say, it's just not for me. Doing those things are not for me. It's not really in my lifestyle. It's not part of my habit. I don't really go to church. I don't really do this. Honestly, friends, I'm telling you, you were given two legs. And God has a race for you. You were given one life. Run it the best you can. I'm not asking you to connect to a religion. I'm not asking you to connect to um, any deep philosophy. I'm, I'm really setting all this aside and just saying, if you would just listen for a little bit and understand that if you position yourself a little bit with God in your free time, just give him a little bit each day. I promise you, he will slowly start untang uh, untangling the web of life that sometimes we feel entangled in. His presence will slowly start untangling that web that we feel so entangled in. And when we're entangled, it becomes a weight and we don't even feel like running. And at that point, the enemy makes you look at other people going, you know, I don't think that's going to work. I don't, I don't believe in that. Just listen today, and I'm hoping by the end of three things that I'm going to show you that Moses did, if you just exercise these, 21 days is a habit. Exercise it for 21 days. I guarantee you in 21 days, the energy from, from the Word of God will get into your subconscious and work into your conscious mind, and you will see a change in the way that you're moving, in the energy that you have. You will be running. You will be lifted up and back into the race. So again, let's just, let's briefly look at Moses. If you don't have the book, that's fine. Listen and write if you do. We are going to focus on pages 64 um, to 67. And really, I'm just going to zoom in on Moses and I'm going to show you three principles that if you activate in your life starting today, and try it for 21 days. I promise that you won't miss the presence of, God, presence of God walking through your life. You won't miss his glory. And that's what we're here for. He wants to show up every single day. I often say to my friends, he wants to sprinkle glitter in that area of your life. He wants to spl sprinkle glitter in that area of your life. So don't let your setbacks hold you. If you're going through a divorce right now or you've been through a divorce, if you're going through terminal illness, if you're going through a relationship battle, if you're going through a marriage battle, if you're going through finances, if you're going through a dream struggle, a work struggle, and I can make a list and I'm sure you can think of something right now that you could write down 
that could be and should be better. Write it down and that is where God's presence wants to pass your life. He doesn't want you to just sit there and feel like, ugh. No, but guess what? Your past and your failures will keep you there. They will keep you so entangled. Okay, so with this in mind, let's move forward and let me share with you how you can see God's glory in your life in this present situation. So what I want to do first is I want to read Exodus 33 verses 12 through 19 with you. I'm going to read this because I want you to hear um, the tone in Moses' um, voice as he's as he's communicating with God, I want you to hear just the sentence structure, the way he questions God, those if words and those but words. When we have a past and we're tripped up on our failure, we often doubt really what God's going to do in our life. We're kind of afraid. We doubt. We have trust issues. We're angry at times with God. So just to get you to stand a little, I want you to understand that we can really identify with Moses. Listen to, listen to this for a second. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. I love how Moses is trying to, you know, regroup God. If I found favor, if you are pleased with me, I 100% believe he was still struggling with the fact that he murdered an Egyptian. And a little brief history on that story. He got his hands in there because he was angry that a Hebrew and an Egyptian were fighting and he wanted to kind of take care of his people. He was just angry about the situation. Have you ever looked at a relationship and two people were fighting and you really wanted to get in there and handle it yourself? That's what he did. He just wanted to handle it in his timing, not in God's will or God's timing. He just wanted to take off and figure it out himself. So with that, he ended up killing the Egyptian and burying the situation in the sand. How often do we handle a situation and bury it in the sand? In my testimony, I did that. I handled a situation and I thought I buried it in the sand and I was going to move on. But I'll tell you what, God is so concerned in healing you fully and wholly that he may bring that situation back up, remind you that he loves you. He has favor for you. He is pleased with you. He is going to crown you not with shame, but with double honor. However, he wants to resolve what you hid in the sand. So he may take you back. And when you go back and you go back through the race and you go back through some of those miles that you were entangled in and that you struggled with, he only wraps you in his promises and helps you understand his love and forgiveness. Therefore, you're running better with endurance and persistence and you're not focusing on the failure. So sometimes when God stands you and brings you back into the race as he was with Moses, Moses, I want you to lead. Moses, I do have favor with you. But let me teach you and take you from one stage of glory to another. But what Moses needed to remember is all of those, if you're pleased, Lord, if you, I find favor in you. And Lord, are you really going to help me? Are you going to bring people to help me? We don't need to question how God's going to do that because he does love you. He will favor you. He will bless you. Listen what Lord, the Lord said back to Moses. Then the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And in a minute, we're going to look at three points on how we miss the Lord's presence. Therefore, we're not having rest in our marriage while we're waiting for God to bring either our spouse from one degree of glory to another. We're trying to handle it our own and bury things in the sand. Or our finances, we're trying to handle things on our own and bury things in the sand. No, God's saying my presence will go with you. We just don't want to miss that. And I'm going to show you how you do not miss his presence. And I will give you rest even on the days that you do not have an answer. He will give you rest. Even on the days when you know that you have failed in the past, he will give you a strong mind and you will not be focusing on that anymore. 
you will have rest in his presence. So key verse, I would write that down today, ladies. If you don't have the book, write it on a piece of index paper or on a, in a journal and just say, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And that's in Exodus 33, verses 12 through 19. Then Moses said to him, if, I love the if again, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? Again, Moses is struggling and that's okay. We do. It takes time to run past that failure. It took several years of healing. It took several years of me understanding how to stand in God's presence to get past that. So the Lord loves the fact if you're just meeting with him, he's okay with the questioning. He can deal with that. What God does not want us to do is just not meet with them and not learn how to run. He wants us to run in such a way. So run in such a way with all the ifs and with the anger and with the arguments and with the, the wrestling with God. God knows how to handle that. That's where you need to take all that energy is give it to him. And so, and, and so Moses goes, how will anyone know that you are pleased with me or your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and, and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Finally, Moses said, then please show me your glory. Show me your glory. Just show me your glory. That is your key highlighted sentence for today. Show me your glory. I don't want to focus. Failure is not final. I don't want to focus on the failure. Lord, I want to focus on your glory. Show me your glory. And the Lord goes on to say, I will cause all my goodness, Moses, to pass in front of you. Take your name and put it there. I will pass all my goodness, Heather. I will pass all my goodness, Stacy. I will pass all my goodness, Brittany, Olivia. Put your friend there. I will pass all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So with a little of that word, let me just show you three points on how you can stand in such a place and not miss the presence of God in your life. And that sounds so big, like, wow, I, I want to be like that person or that person because they really understand the presence of God. It's not hard. It's a glimmer of glitter that God wants to sprinkle in your life today, in your life. And he loves you and he's well pleased regardless. So you deserve it. You're deserving of it. Just get yourself in a place to receive it. So here's three things I want you to practice. Again, they are in the book. I want you to write the three things if you do not have on a piece of paper. If you do have the workbook, there's activities after each three principles that I'm going to give you that you can work out a little bit more this week. So I'm highly recommending the activity just takes you one step further. It helps you run a little bit harder. It teaches you a little bit more about endurance in your faith. It teaches you a little bit more about persistence. So it's a great tool. So number one, what I want to show you is the first thing that Moses did in order to, to get in a place to see the presence of God walk by, because we, we read that in the verse. It says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Well, how do we find the presence of God in our lives? Number one, Moses asked. Number one, ask to see his glory. Ask, 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 ask. Ask to see his glory. Write it down on a piece of paper. One of my favorite verses is Proverbs 13, 12, and it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire brings forth a tree of life. Deferred means set back. You feel like you're entangled. You're struggling. You feel like there's a weight on you. I know if you go back and you look at your te my testimony and you look at my failure, it was a big deferred moment in my life. I know another part of my testimony, my marriage. It was a big deferred moment in my life. Our health can feel like a deferred moment in our life. We can't focus on the deferred moment. We need to focus on where God's glory is at in the midst of that, where the glitter is at. Ask God to show you his glory in the midst of that situation. Ask him for some glitter in the midst of the situation. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire. The desire is asking. That's the first step of the desire. So just ask. 
What is holding you back? What is your deferred moment? What does your setback look like? Write that down and on the positive side, what is the desire? What is it that you want to see? And ask God to show you his glory in that situation. So it's a bold step. First thing is asked. Second thing, very, very important. If you are not in place to receive it or notice it, you will not see it pass by. So again, it's your positioning. If you are not in the place, come on guys, if you are not in the place to receive it, you will not notice it pass by. So what does this mean? In Exodus 34, two through three, it says, Moses, be ready in the morning and come up to Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me at the top of the mountain. All I'm saying, friends, is where are you presenting yourself to God? Are you on a run and you're talking to him? Do you have a place in your house you can just sit down and present yourself to him? Get yourself in a dream routine, in a habit. I've shared this on several of my videos. I have a routine that I practice. Some of my greatest mentors, Becky Vaught, if you're listening, I love you. You taught me this. But some of my greatest mentors in life have taught me that you need to make a habit with meeting with God. So one of the habits that I have now is in the morning. I get up, I do a short um, prayer, I listen to a faith-based message. I have some great preachers that I'll turn on, but I listen to a faith-based message. The next thing is I read something on my word for the year. My word right now currently for the year is habit. So I will listen to a YouTube video on habit. I will listen to something that will help me with my word for the year. After that, I review my dreams and my goals. I look at my goals weekly. I look at my goals monthly, yearly. I kind of just review those really quickly and then I exercise. On a given day, if it's nice out, I am out running and listening to the faith-based message, kind of reviewing some of the things in my, um, in my mind as I'm running and I'm praying. So exercise, I will combine a lot of those together. But it is a habit, and you will notice that successful people have a habit in their life, and a lot of them start early in the morning. So it's something that I began practicing, and I still instill that, because what happens is when I get up in the morning and I keep that habit in place, what happens is I position myself during the day to see God's presence, a little bit of glitter in my situation. Because 99% of the time, whatever the faith-based message was, it will speak to me, because that's how God's spirit works. He will use people, he will use other preachers, he will use teachers. If you're in a Bible study during the week, that's why I always encourage ladies to get into a small group. You will hear a word from God, and he will speak it. That's the glory coming over your situation. If you're handling this all on your own, and it's like, here's you and your situation, and here's everything God wants to do, and you have a wall up in between both of you, you can't sense the presence of God, and this is where you want to be. He's created you to be on this side with Him. So you need to get to a place where you're positioning yourself to hear. So what does your mountain look like? Moses needed to get to the mountain. He needed to get to the mountain to hear a word from God. And it's amazing because if you look back in scripture, the Ten Commandments, if he didn't go up and meet with God, he would have never been received the Ten Commandments. God handed him his next job. So often you will find a lot of times God's blessing and favor comes through our obedience with meeting through him. Because a lot of times we will meet with him and just learning, meeting, meeting through him with Bible study, meeting, listening to your faith-based message, getting in the habit of listening to God however that looks for you. What it does is it sets opportunities up. God goes to work for you. He goes to work for you. He sets up opportunities, and because you met with him and you're, you're sensing his presence, you're learning a little bit about him, you will recognize the opportunity. When you hit into the opportunity, you write hit in right into God's favor, and he's pleased. He has a blessing for you. Often we miss our blessings because we don't position in our, ourselves in a place to receive. First, just receive his presence, receive his word. And then it helps us. It, it, it helps our mind. It renews our mind. We're stronger. So wherever we're running during the day, we have that in our mind. And God works through, through that. So it's just a habit. So I'm encouraging you, number two, if you're not in place to receive him, you're not going to recognize his presence pass by after that. I know our church right now is doing something where they're putting us, sending texts to us on a daily basis to get us involved in his word. 
The more you're involved in his word, the more you are in his presence. You will begin to see his glory in your marriage. You will begin to see his glory in your finances. And you'll pick out the glitter. You'll be able to see the glitter. You'll be able to see the glitter. And so, again, how, what does your habit look like? Do you have a habit? I'm encouraging you to get to a place to receive so you can notice that. Get deeper with God. Get to your mountain. The less time that you spend with God, the more time the devil has on tripping you up, keeping you in your failure, keeping everything finalized that happened in your past. And if the devil keeps you entangled there, he wins. You just get used to the weight. It's like you're running and you're just like, oh, I'm going to keep going. You just keep getting used to the weight. Don't live there. Don't live there. I lived there way too long. Set it aside and start creating the habit of meeting with him. If your excuse to me is I'm too busy, I have to work, my kids have this, my, you're missing out. You're missing out on the greater blessings because God will help you control that whole calendar and then some, and then some. The weight of busyness even disappears. You'll be surprised how much time you have. So I'm encouraging you to find your mountain, find your place to position yourself to learn and grow in God and therefore you're not going to miss his presence you can't afford not to do that you need to get to that place I'm encouraging you work your calendar around for that number three another way that we miss his glory is this is we often write our own personal expected outcomes because we say well I'm, I'm hoping in God I have faith in God I'm believing in God and my expectation is in him but if it doesn't handle this way, that hand, if it doesn't work out this way, it must not have been God. And therefore now I'm angry. I'm angry at God because my expected, my expected outcome did not happen. And we need to be really careful there. We need to be really careful, friends. We know that we have to expect that God's glory will show up in his unique form for our life. His will for our life. His will, his unique form for our life. There's no, God does want us to believe. God's, God does want us to exercise our faith. God wants us to have hope. But within all of that, let him stir the recipe together. He has the perfect ending. Sometimes it's not the ending we expect, but we need to live in that. And we need to know that in his presence, we will still find rest. In his presence, we will still find rest. Even if it's not the expected outcome that we had written. But listen, when you write it down, in those hard situations a lot of times, if you write down what could be and should be, that's first exercising your faith. Now, just practice letting God create the outcome. Because sometimes our expectations are so high that when it comes to the end of the race or the specific race for this situation or this situation or this situation, and it really doesn't pan out the way we wanted it to, then we kind of walk away with some attitude, with some emotions, with some fear, with some trust issues, and we're ultimately angry at God. Really, God doesn't want us to get to that place. He's in all of this. He's even in the hard times. Our hope is in him, but we need to make sure our expectation is in him also. And that's Psalm 62, 5. You need to hope in the Lord, but know that his expectation, he has it. Hope in his expectations. We can't write our own. So what does that mean? Let me take it one step further right before we end. A lot of times when we're in the midst of our problem, the thing that's entangling us and ensnaring us, we have to know that God's presence, when we position ourselves at the mountain, he's going to give us fresh direction, how to deal with that, pro that problem. That ultimately is his glory. That's a picture of his glitter. He'll help us handle that. We can't tag on our expectations to the end of that. We just need to be obedient to meet, let him give us fresh direction in the problem. I gave you the key when the door wasn't open. Just admit it. See, I gave you faith, turned your doubt into hope. Can't deny it. Now I'm all alone and my joys turn them open Tell me, where are you now that I need you? Where are you now? Where are you now that I need you?
couldn't find you anywhere When you broke down, I didn't leave ya oh. I was by your side, so where are you?